A girl who cannot even hold the bow properly wants to become the world's greatest hunter, but as soon as she enters her teenage years, she is tasked to save her whole tribe. In the thick and beautiful forest of Amazon, there lives a 13 years old girl named Ainbow. Every day she wanders around to practice her hunting skills but hasn't improved a bit. Today is her sister Zumi's birthday and Ainbow wants to bring a special gift for her. She aims for the most beautiful bird and sets up a trap which she believes to be foolproof. As Ainbow is waiting for the prey, she realizes that she hasn't placed the bait. She immediately grabs a worm and puts it in the trap but accidentally gets caught in her own trap. Now she is hanging in the middle of the forest while Zumi is anxiously waiting for her. Zumi is the daughter of Huarinka, the chief of a village named Kandamo. For the past few months, the sea is getting filled with dead fish, and the village people including Huarinka have fallen sick. Huarinka believes that it is because of a curse, but the origin of the curse is unknown. Zumi has turned 13, and Huarinka took the responsibility of the village at this age so he wants Zumi to do the same. Moreover, he is not healthy enough to handle the village. Zumi is feeling nervous, but her parents believe that she has all the qualities to become a great leader. The time for the ceremony is drawing near, but Zumi wants to wait for her sister. Atok, an arrogant man from the village, finds Ainbo, but instead of helping him, he makes fun of her. He reminds Ainbo that she is not Zumi's real sister. The chief's wife took pity on Ainbo after her parents' death and took care of her. After he leaves, two weird creatures named Vaka and Dillo reach there to help Ainbo. They claim to be her spirit guide, but Ainbo assumes that she is seeing things because of stress. When the spirits bring her down, Ainbo finally starts trusting them and takes them back to the village. All the people are gathered for the crown ceremony of Zumi. Huarinka takes off his royal necklace and puts it around his daughter's neck. Ainbo finally reaches there and decides to present the spirits as a gift to Zumi. But the spirits aren't allowed to be in public like this and do not come out when Ainbo calls them on stage. Everyone assumes that Ainbo is lying and she runs away in embarrassment. She meets the spirit guides in the forest again and they tell their actual reason for arrival. They came to help Ainbo save the village. The curse in the village is done by the forest demon Yakuruna. It can only be cured by a special root buried deep somewhere in the forest. Only Motelo Mama knows where the root is. She is a giant turtle who carries the weight of the world on her shell. After hearing this all, Ainbo decides to tell everything to Zumi and she invites her to meet the spirits. But Zumi refuses to believe that the spirits exist, and she forbids Ainbo from going to the forest. Ainbo gets sad and rushes to her adoptive mother Chuni who calls her a special child. Ainbo's biological mother Lazani also had special characteristics and used to see spirit guides. Even when she died, she appeared in Chuni's dream to tell her about Ainbo's location. Ainbo wants to hear more about her mother, but it is time to sleep. The next morning, she forces Zumi to accompany her to Chuni so they both can learn more about the spirit guides. Chuni is still on her bed. When Ainbo tries to wake her up, Chuni shows no response. Atok reaches there too and declares Chuni dead. He puts all the blame on Ainbo as she was the last person Chuni met last night. Moreover, he believes that Ainbo and her spirits are evil who brought curse to the village. Ainbo runs away and Atok asks Zumi to let him capture Ainbo. He believes that she used some black magic to kill Chuni and made Huarinka sick. Zumi refuses to believe this nonsense and tells Atok to leave immediately. Meanwhile, Ainbo hides in the forest and cries in helplessness. She notices a small turtle and remembers about Motelo Mama, but she does not know how to find her. The spirit guides also return and help Ainbo to say goodbye to Chuni's soul. She cannot even attend the funeral while Zumi performs the ritual by herself and sends away her mother's body. Afterwards, she tells her father everything that Atok had said. Warinka advises Zumi to act like the chief and do what she believes is right. The next morning, Zumi takes two guards and heads to the forest to stop Atok and bring back her sister. Ainbo wants to know more about the curse, but the spirit guides refuse to tell everything at once. They want Ainbo to complete this mission independently so she can learn more. However, they agree to give her hints and prepare her for the big journey. Pair her. After walking for a while, Ainbo starts feeling hungry but cannot aim at the fruits on the tree. The spirits help her practice and also give her a special arrow. They continue their journey to the Grand River which may lead to Motelo Mama. On the way, she notices a bunch of guys from the modern civilization that are digging a huge pit. Suddenly, a blonde man in a white outfit comes near Ainbo. His eyes are glowing red and dark spirits are surrounding his body. He is possessed by the forest demon Yakuruna. Ainbo gets scared and runs away. The dark spirits keep following her and she ends up jumping in the river. Vaka and Dillo help her get to the shore and now she needs to complete the further journey by herself. She suddenly feels like someone is following her. The next moment, Ainbo finds herself tied up. It was Atok who kidnapped her. He lies that Zumi sent him to capture Ainbo and end the curse. 
Ainbo refuses to believe that and aims at Atok with her bow and arrow. She reminds Atok of Ainbo's mother, who was the fastest runner, the best hunter, and knew every part of the jungle. Atok loved her like crazy, but Lizeni married someone else. He still holds the grudge and wants to take revenge from Ainbo. Realizing this, Aibo prefers jumping down rather than getting caught by Atok. When she gets back into her senses, Ainbo finds a little turtle. It leads her into a secret oasis where a beautiful waterfall is flowing down. Suddenly the ground starts to shake and the head of a turtle appears under the waterfall. It is Motelo Mama, and she does seem to be carrying the world on her back. Motelo Mama also knows Lizeni and Ainbo's favorite tree. Ainbo used to tell the tree all her stories. It feels like the tree has Lizeni's soul. Motelo Mama reveals that the root Ainbo is looking for is under her favorite tree. Ainbo starts to doubt herself and believes that she is nothing more than a cowardly girl who desires to become the best hunter but does not even know how to aim for the prey. Motelo Mama comforts her and tells her that everyone in the world feels scared at some point, but the brave one keeps standing against their fears. Ainbo has to do the same. She is the last hope of Kandamo. Her favorite tree is a sacred one whose roots hold the power to change even the darkest hearts, but they can only be cut with a special blade made of moonstone. Fortunately, Ainbo does not have to go to the moon for that. She can find a moonstone on the volcano. A giant sloth named Palejo lives there. Ainbo must deliver him a sweet treat so he can agree to help her. Ainbo starts wondering what she can give to Palejo, but the spirit guides solve this problem as well. They have brought a sweet leaf tree, but Ainbo must take the whole tree to the top of the mountain because Palejo has a big appetite. Ainbo cannot do it alone and requests the spirit guides to accompany her. After more than an hour, they drag the tree halfway up the mountain, but it loses control and falls down again. Meanwhile, Zumi has found Atok and she questions him about Ainbo. Atok replies that they do not have to worry about Ainbo as he has made an even bigger discovery. Atok has met the mysterious white guy who introduces himself as Cornell DeWitt. He claims to be a scientist and a healer who creates medicines from plants. He even has the medicine to cure Zumi's father. In return, he just wants to know where he can find the gold which is used by Kandamo to make jewelry. Zumi immediately agrees and takes Cornell to her village. Back at the volcano, Ainbo and her spirit guides finally succeed in taking the tree to the top. There, Ainbo meets Palejo, the giant sloth. He seems to be a little moody at first, but gives away the moonstone as soon as Ainbo gives him the tree. Palejo also turns the stone into a dagger so it can be used to cut the roots. Palejo advises the villagers to return immediately as the volcano is about to erupt. Ainbo and Dillo uses Palejo's fan as a plane to fly away, while Vaka uses the long way as he is too fat to ride the wooden plane. They soon reach the sacred tree and Ainbo pulls out the dagger to cut the roots. Suddenly, she gets interrupted by Zumi who informs her about Huarinka, his recovery. Ainbo returns to the place to meet the doctor but gets shocked to see that it is the man who is possessed by Yakaruna. Ainbo tells this to Zumi but she refuses to believe anything related to demons or spirits. Zumi also threatens to banish Ainbo from the village if she keeps on taking like this. Ainbo walks away quietly but Zumi warns her not to go to the forest again otherwise she will not be welcomed back. Ainbo feels heartbroken and packs her things to leave Kandamo forever. Cornell also enters her room to see her helplessness, but Ainbo does not want to interact with him. After she leaves, Atok reaches there and sees the demon side of Cornell. He finally realizes that Ainbo was right, and he rushes to help her. Meanwhile, Cornell hypnotizes Zumi, and she orders the whole village to bow before Cornell. Atok meets the spirit guides and apologizes to Ainbo for not believing her. Together, they put the dagger on the sacred tree. It magically absorbs into the roots and a figure forms in front of the tree. It is Lizeni's spirit. She has been living in the tree and kept looking after her beloved daughter. Lizeni asks for the golden tip arrow and uses her own magic to make it more powerful. Suddenly they hear loud noises. It is the machines brought by Cornell to destroy the village and the beautiful forests. Lizeni stands in front of the machines and orders them to leave the forest immediately. Cornell reaches there and claims to be the new ruler of Amazon. Lizeni calls him by the name Will and challenges him to hear the truth. Many years ago, Will came to the village as a young man, but mostly people hated him. But Lizeni fell in love with him and he loved her too. Atok got jealous and accused Will as a wizard who has cursed Lizeni. They both were banished from the village. Lizeni was saved by the forest spirits and became one of them. But Will was captured by evil Yakaruna. Hearing this all, Cornell loses his senses and completely becomes the Yakaruna demon. Lizeni is not afraid because she believes that her daughter will defeat the demon. Ainbo has only one shot to take down Yakaruna, but she cannot bring herself to shoot at her father. Atok explains to her that she is not attacking her father, she is saving him from the demon. Atok rushes to get Zumi and Ainbo aims for Yakaruna. 
Her arrow flies like a flame and strikes right on target. Yakaruna and all of his machines are destroyed. After a while, a man steps out of the ruins. He is Will, Lizeni's beloved husband and Ainbo's father. Ainbo runs to her parents and hugs them tightly. However, they cannot stay together forever. Lizeni and Will have become spirits and they do not belong to this world anymore, but they will stay nearby and look after their daughter. Atok steps forward and promises to take care of Ainbo like a father. Lizeni gets satisfied and decides to leave. She and Will become a part of the sacred tree again, and Ainbo can visit them anytime she wants. Zumi hugs Ainbo and calls her a hero who saved Kandamo and its people. Ainbo believes there is still a lot to explore in the huge forests of Amazon, but Zumi says it will be a piece of cake for Ainbo and her spirit guides. Hearing this, Vaka and Dillo also announce their departure. They only came here to prepare Ainbo, and she is fully trained now. Moreover, she has Zumi to accompany her in the upcoming adventures. Everyone in this world has a special purpose. No matter where he is born or where he is brought up, his fate will guide him to the right place to do the right thing in the right time. He just needs to keep an eye on the signs.